In this section of the training, we'll review the Generation 2 hub bearing. Generation 2 style hub bearings are a double row ball or tapered design. They have an outer ring with an integral flange, replacing the function of a separate hub. The flanged outer ring is designed as a lightweight structural component. The flange has threaded holes or studs and a spigot or pilot to center and mount the brake and wheel. Generation 2 hub bearings can be found in non-driven front or rear wheel. Some Generation 2 hub bearings may also include an impulse wheel or tone ring as part of the ABS, traction control, or stability control systems. The impulse wheel is typically located on the outer ring. The impulse wheel is not serviceable. In this section, we will only cover a typical rear hub bearing in a non-driven application. The principles are basically the same for all applications of Generation 2 style wheel bearings. Tip. Generation 2 hub bearings are precision engineered components and are susceptible to damage by using an air gun. Do not use an impact wrench when installing these units. Only use the correct torque specifications and manufacturer's recommended installation procedure. We'll start by looking at the inspection and diagnosis procedures associated with Generation 2 hub bearings. Begin by following the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to remove the tire and wheel. Remove the brake rotor and caliper or brake drum and then rotate the hub. Any roughness or resistance to rolling is an indication of contaminant intrusion or a failed bearing. If these conditions are present, the bearing requires replacement. Do not attempt to disassemble the bearing for repair. It is not repairable. Tip. On vehicles equipped with disc brakes, remove and hang the caliper out of the way using a wire hanger. Do not support the caliper by letting it hang by the brake hose. On vehicles equipped with wheel speed sensors, disconnect the sensor and hang the sensor wire out of the way using a wire hanger. Next, check the bearing end play using a dial indicator. Mount the dial indicator base on the frame. With the dial plunger or pointer against the flange face, set the indicator gauge at zero. Grasp the hub flange at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. With equal pressure on both hands, push straight in and read the dial indicator. Then, with equal pressure on both hands, pull out and read the dial indicator again. The bearing end play is equal to the total dial indicator movement. End play should not exceed three thousandths to five thousandths of an inch. Also, inspect the hub flange for excessive runout. Excessive runout or a bent wheel flange can lead to brake rotor or other component problems in the suspension system. Finally, check the runout by using a dial indicator. Mount the dial indicator base in a non-movable location, such as the frame. With a dial indicator plunger or pointer against the hub flange face, Set the indicator gauge at zero. Rotate the hub and read the dial indicator. Runout should not exceed two thousandths of an inch. Let's move on to the hub bearing removal procedure for Generation 2 hub bearings. First, disconnect the wheel speed sensor if applicable. Then remove the dust cap from the hub bearing assembly if applicable. Remove the hub bearing retaining nut and then remove the assembly from the knuckles spindle. Once the assembly is removed from the knuckle spindle, we can start installation of the new hub bearing. Begin by removing grease and dirt from the spindle. Inspect the spindle for burrs, nicks, embedded particles, scoring, bending, thread or other damage. Carefully smooth out any roughness with an emery cloth. Follow the manufacturer's recommendation for acceptable spindle wear. Install the hub bearing assembly on the knuckle spindle. Then install and finger tighten a new hub retaining nut. Tip. Some hubs come with a new nut in the box. This is typically when a one-time use self-staking nut secures the hub. In these applications a new nut must always be used when installing a hub. Reuse of the old nut could potentially cause the nut to loosen during vehicle operation. Next, torque the hub nut according to the manufacturer's recommended procedure. Important. Do not use an impact wrench to set the torque of the hub retaining nut. Only use a torque wrench. Finally, reinstall all remaining components per the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure. Install the rotor or drum and follow the vehicle manufacturer's recommended procedure to replace the tire and wheel. Tip. 
The best practice is to have the vehicle on the ground to perform the final torquing to OEM specifications and always check and adjust the alignment as necessary after this service. Now let's review some general service information about Generation 2 hub bearings. Installation of Generation 2 hub bearings may require some special tools. They are sealed for life, generally for at least 100,000 miles. Generation 2 hub bearings require specific vehicle hub retaining nut torque. And always remember, do not use an impact wrench to tighten the hub retaining nut. Now, let's review some common causes of failure. Improper hub retaining nut torque can cause failure, as well as the use of low quality or value grade parts. 